Hello friends, in this video, I am going to discuss 10 points for effective preparation in your exams. Number 1 is planning. In planning, we need to create a proper schedule considering the time which is available to us and we can contribute for the effective preparation. From that, we need to prepare a feasible and also a productive schedule. Based on that, we need to set certain timelines and it should be periodically updated. And remember, while planning, we should not miss out the time for revision strategies because revisions are very key parameters in exams that makes you clearly reproduce in exams and confidently approach your exams. My second advice is never believe in your memory. The greatest enemy or threat during exam preparations is your memory. You believe in your memory more but memory is one inherent thing within you which you trust the most. What you need to know is you need to understand your potential for memory and you need to identify that threshold and you need to read above that particular threshold and based on that you need to schedule your time. And remember, in all our exams, memory is getting tested, not your intelligence. So, hard work will be rewarded more than your smart work. So, always remember, memory is tested. It needs just hard work and also repetitive work. Then, while doing this planning, you should be emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence is knowing one's own potential, one's own limitation, one's memory threshold. And you need to execute your plan accordingly. In your life also, this emotional intelligence decides the success by 80%. And only 20% is decided by your intelligent quotient. So this emotional quotient is very much important in case of your success in exams. Then the fourth important point is you need to identify your time monsters. During our older days, it was cricket matches or playing cricket. But nowadays, it is a mix of social media, video games, movies and chatting with other friends. These are all the time monsters. What I would say is you need not or cannot completely avoid this time monsters. What I would advise you to do is you need to decide on how much amount of time you are planning to spend on this time monsters you decide it before your exams and that amount of time can be allowed only when you finish off your quota of reading time so after finishing your quota of reading time then you can use your time for this time monsters and remember i have not mentioned sleep as a time monster because sleep is good for not only for your clear mind and reducing the stress but also it helps in the retention of the memory what you read so sleep is never considered as a time monster and this time monsters take much of the time during the initial stages of the exam preparation. You need to be very careful during the initial stages and the fifth important point is identify your motivators. You need to identify your motivators for exams. It can be your friend or one of your parent or your teacher. You can spend more time with such motivators and you can prepare. And always remember you know yourself better than anyone. Sometimes these motivators can give you some ambitious or optimistic optimistic ideas or even pessimistic ideas but you need to plot a proper plan for yourself so the motivation has to come from within you so that is very very important then the sixth point is avoid stressors stressors have a negative effect on your body health and mind to reduce the stressors you can sleep if you follow your original planning and schedule then you automatically your stress will come down taking a balanced diet will also will help you can play and do exercise to reduce the stress you can listen to music to reduce the stress you can drink plenty of water and stay hydrated for reducing your stress level then the seventh important point is give 100 percent while reading avoid multitasking you need to take breaks but you need to resume it faster instead of doing multitasking while reading what you can do is you can use different study techniques for example instead of monotonously going with your textbook you can listen to some videos or you can listen to somebody's podcast or listen to somebody's explanations so all these different modalities you can try instead of your mind occupied with your multitasking. You discuss whenever you meet your friends, discuss about subjects more than other things. When I say multitasking, I am not restricting you to take breaks. You need to take breaks but at the same time you need to resume faster. So how this happens is when we are doing a simple stretch and simple walk, listening to music, drinking water, all can give you breaks but only thing is after the break you need to resume the, su the subject which you learn with more breaks. Breaks. So that is the content which you learn just before the break and after the break will have a good retention of memory. We move on to the eighth point while studying how to study. I would advise you to divide the topics based on superficial and deep. Superficial is something about everything. So you have to grasp a few things about every aspect of the subject and deep is you need to grasp everything about some topics. So usually the deep topics will come as a essay questions. So you need to read everything about 
about it and while reading remember always you should make notes of it and write the notes you can add a sticky note to your page and you can add points but always have a single book to follow because this is going to help you in revision when you look at multiple resources all the resources has to be copied into a single book and that book has to contain what all you have collected that has to be revised according to me any topic studied without revision will not be beneficial for exams so you need to revise for that purpose you need to collect that information store it in the textbook which you are supposed to use for revision understand and read so whenever you are not able to understand things you have to read it multiple times you need to refer internet or you need to ask somebody so without understanding you should not move on with any subject or content and always it is good to re- remember things by mnemonics if there is a commonly available mnemonic get that mnemonic and remember or you make your own mnemonic and remember that so so the eighth point is divide the topics make notes keep mnemonic understand things then the ninth point is you should expose yourself to the previous questions so you need to understand the pattern of questions how the questions are asked while seeing the previous question bank you should also identify the focus area of questions so the important areas need to be given more importance while you are studying so that is the most important purpose of looking at your question bank then the 10th and last important point is being confident and positive you need to understand one thing so with the available time and the timeline i have given my 100% i have revised it and i know this much and i don't know this much you need to de- demarcate between what i know and what i don't know there lies the true wisdom that is true wisdom lies in what you don't know rather than what you know and remember success in these exams does not reflect success in life success in life is a different parameter at all and it is nowhere related to this success in exams always keep that in mind be confident and positive is the 10th and last point and i wish you all success in your exams thanks for watching this video